Well, good day, everybody. Glad you could join me today. Today, I just want to uh, showcase some of my work and um, just show you what uh, what you can do with leather. Just got to keep uh, an open mind to certain designs. Don't let the tool, um, how would I say, intimidate you. Because no matter what you have as far as a blade or anything else that you want to do, you should have no problem once you get involved. So this is just some of the items that I've made so far. I will put in some photos of uh, items that I've made for clients, but I figured, you know what, let's take a look at some of this stuff. All right, so I'm going to reset the camera up onto a small table and I'll just bring the uh, items over one at a time. Well, this is where it all began. May 2020, due to the C-19, here in Canada, Ontario, all over the place, we were on lockdown, shut down. Well, I had to find a hobby. So, I decided, you know what? Let's give leather a go. And uh, <laughs> I started off with uh, my first hatchet, tomahawk. I did a little bit of leather work for the handle and some paracord. And then I made myself a mask. This is the very, very first time working with leather. Never did it before. First time with uh, putting a, the clip on the hasp. First time doing tool work. This here is what started it all. The snaps and everything I had to purchase and as it was coming in, I was trying my best at, uh, <laughs> at tool work, uh, leather work, uh, every bit of everything. But anyways, this is the very first project, May 2020. Let's take a look at something else. My next project was this uh, Becker Kephart design, BK62. Love this. Oh man, do I love this blade. Now, the original sheath, there's nothing wrong with it. But hey, I just got into leather and I, di I didn't like it. So I've seen a lot of people making like uh, right hand cross draw. I'm right handed. So this is my first uh, design just a few days after the, uh, the axe mask. I figured I'd make this here cross draw sheath. So there she go. A little bit of wet forming. Never did that before, but I want to give it a try. There it is. Again, everything here is nine ounce veg tan leather. And every day, I was on YouTube and Google teaching myself the art of leather crafting. 
So this was my second project. So this is my next project. Now, this axe is a fireman's axe. From all the information that I was told and research that I found, and the way it's dated and all that, it's uh, 1863 to 1865. Very easy, unclip it. All right, and snap it here. Okay, so it's a two piece. So there's the one piece there for the uh, for the pick. Again, my first second time doing the uh, wet molding. So that's one piece there, and then there's this piece. There's the other piece there. I didn't know how else to do it. I had to, well, like I said, very early in my career, so I did it in a two piece. I couldn't see myself trying to do that in one piece. Again, all nine ounce leather. What a beautiful axe, eh? Check that out. Even the blue paint is original from eighteen sixty three. It was never, ever touched. When I put that on Facebook a couple times, I was offered a good chunk of change. And I said, you know what? I don't think so. So let's check out something else. All right, so this is my uh, Becker BK7. Very nice blade. Watching a lot of uh, YouTube channels, I learned about uh, Scout Carry. That's behind the back. So I made a sheath for that, but I didn't want it to be just one function. So what I did, is I also made it with a uh, belt loop. Okay, so basically here's the loop here to put uh, your belt through so you can carry it behind your back or you can have it as a, a leg drop. This is the first time doing etching on leather yellow threads again all nine ounce leather and I put a retention strap because of the design of the sheath you can unsnap it so it makes it a lot easier to put it around your belt that way you don't have to take your belt off to uh, thread it you just clip her on snap her up So that's my uh, very first sheath, multifunction. So this is my next sheath for my BK-10. This is a piece, man. I also got the BK-2, but 
I like the BK-10. I, li I like the, the weight. My BK-2 still has the original sheath. I really, really don't like that plastic polymer uh, sheath. So I'm going to make one in leather one day. Right hand cross draw sheath. Similar to, well, I used the pattern from my BK-62 because I really like it. I love the way it fit. I just had to change the inside to accommodate my uh, my BK-10. As you can see, I like my red thread. <laughs> Again, all nine ounce. A little bit of tooling. Not the best, but you got to practice somewheres. I really like that sheath. A friend of mine also has a BK-10. And when he seen this here sheath, he said, uh, can you make me something like that, but uh, left hand? I said, sure I can. And I'll insert the picture now. All right. Again, right hand cross draw. Now, this here came into a hard plastic clear type of sheath. I really didn't like that hard plastic. Especially if you're dealing in cold weather, I just didn't want it to break. That's my Pocket Boy 170. Now, this sheath is repurposed leather. This here is a custom, comes from Poland, and this here was the sheath for it. Total different design though, because I had to manipulate that to fit this. But I wanted this one here to have its own sheath, and we'll take a look at that later. So what I did is I repurposed the sheath right here. To accommodate my silky, it also has a belt loop. And fits like a glove. Repurposed. Don't throw out your projects. Don't throw out your sheath. Do not throw out your old leather belts. You can always repurpose it. That was my next project. All right. Again, I wanted to change it up a little bit. So I took my other custom from Franklin Knives. That's a beast, man. A little bit bigger than the, the Becker BK2. Look at the edge on that. That sucker's sharp. So, I wanted to kind of make my own take on a survival all-around package for this knife. If this is all you had in the field. And this sheath is what I came up with. Okay, I have a pouch on it. It's nice and thick welt. I put it in a pouch. It's all. This is all 9 ounce uh, leather. Fair rod uh, loop, and you could put a tin in here if you want. Put some fire starter in there, or you use the pouch for whatever you want. Hey, eh? myself, that's what I use it for. Then I got a fair rod in there, snaps up. Now this is what I was telling you earlier about the snaps. Okay, where sometimes you have no choice, and in this instance, I have no choice because of the width of the blade. When I slide it in, there is no way to get the retention because of the, how thick it is here. 
So I had to put on a snap. But everything is sewn. This one here, I double sewed everything right around. It's all double sewed right through. And lots of glue. I like that. That is a nice little setup right there. This was uh, my next project. On the table you see five. I think I done... Oh, I completed maybe a dozen. And I have probably about a dozen left in... Uh, in uh, different stages. Again, all nine ounce leather. Nice little uh, pouches. All nice snaps. And you can put uh, you can put any type of tin you want in them. Like that's a fair size tin. Look at the size of my hand. You know. You could put you know your imagination what you could put in there. And slide her in. Okay, or you can just leave it out and put whatever you want. Okay, I like the, uh, this was my very first attempt at wet molding using uh, a wooden blocks and stuff like that. I never did it before. This was my very first one. Then my second one is similar to this one but it's round and I keep my uh, Lansky uh, puck in it again Altoid tins they all have belt loops every one of them I tried to get different shapes and sizes I didn't want it to be all the same And then the bigger one. That's a big pouch. That's a nice one right there. My favorite is this one. I don't know. It's just, it was the very, very first one I made. And I just, sentimental values, I guess. <laughs> but I like that one. First, first time doing wet molding. Again, another custom. <laughs> I, li I like this one. This is this is a good knife. Very nice knife. Look at the edge on that son of a gun. Sharp. Some of you might recognize the uh, maker's mark. It had to have a special sheath. I thought good and hard on it. And then that's when I came up with this one. My first double design type idea, I guess you'd say. My first tooling that I really liked. Even though it's only uh, dimples type idea. This here took a little finesse into getting it perfect because I wanted I wanted it to be part of the leather. I wanted it to be one piece.
I enjoy working with the leather. So that was my next project. All right, so this is my uh, EK-16. Very nice knife. And my very first time actually doing inlays. I seen a video on it and I said, you know what? I'm going to give that a shot. So this is my interpretation of an inlay. This here is all different types of leather. Again, 9 ounce. But I also did it in the uh, belt loop. And, you know what? Even though you don't see the back, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do it in the back also. Good practice, and I really like the way it turned out. I really, um, how would I say that, wanted good retention in all my work. So I want to make sure that when I install the knife, it's got positive retention. It's, it's what I wanted in all my leather work. I didn't want the knife to fall out of the sheath, you know. So you got to lift up the handle, pull it out. So that was my first attempt at inlay. Still has a shine. Look at that. All right. Now, prior to this project, a friend of mine wanted me to construct some uh, puko sheaths, traditional puko sheaths. I'll install the picture right now. Now, <laughs> I've, I didn't even know what a puko sheath was. So I had to do some research and see what he was talking about. He explained it pretty quick on the phone and stuff like that. And I said, you know what? If it's made out of leather, I'll give it a go. So I found some pictures. Found out that there's inserts in them. I tried to get some plastic inserts. But then I started to think about it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to stay old school. So I made uh, the Puko sheaths with wooden inserts. And I'll show the wooden inserts right here. All right. So that was my next project. Then after that was this one here. I, I know there was a lot of um, um, talk about neck knives. Uh, you know, easy access. Uh, just put it on your neck and it's always with you. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make one. So I took my uh, Becker BK-11. Very nice knife. I got a few of these. I really like them. Nice and small. Light. You can do a lot with this. <laughs> and this is what I made. I used a paracord as a lanyard. And it's adjustable. You can just slide her up, slide her down. And then I want it to carry it upside down so that I can draw the knife from the bottom. Instead of having it hang like this and draw it out towards my chin, I wanted it upside down so I can just grab it from the bottom. Now, this veg tan here okay is seven ounce I didn't want to go too heavy so I only went seven ounce with this one so anyways I put uh, some deer uh, prints on it and I put a shock cord for retention but that was my next project that's how I carry it but because of this there you go 
that ain't going nowhere. And you know you got good retention. So that was my next project. All right. So my next project was belts. So I made this here's all uh, buffalo hide. Okay, I got antique uh, silver. I got uh, gun metal. I got all different uh, fasteners and whatnot. I was asked. If I made belts, I said, uh, what kind of belts? They said, uh, to hold up your pants. So I said, okay. I said, no, I have not, but let me research that. So I did a lot of research, found out uh, how to measure belts, how to make belts, and how to make my own jigs. So... How to uh, put holes in the belts, where to put the holes, how to do different style tips, what the different style tips mean. So like I said, I made uh, quite a few of these belts. This is my last one. And I don't cut the end until it's sold. Because once it's sold, then I have to measure it and then talk to uh, whoever buys it. To see what type of uh, shape they want at the end and how many holes they want. So I made a whole bunch of these. That's my last one. Uh, black seems to be the preference, but when I try to explain to the people that this is this is special, <laughs> you know what I mean? Buffalo leather. I don't dye this. I buy it like that. Buy sheets of it. And they still wanted just plain old black veg tan. So I said, okay. Client gets what they want. So I made a bunch of them also. Now, I also was making a two inch, a lot wider. Okay. So there's a antique brass. I got everything ready to go. I don't know what type of buckle is going to go on there yet. I have a bunch of different ideas. And I never did my tip yet. But that's a 2 inch belt. And I was going to make myself a belt for bushcraft. Whenever I'm out in a bush or whatever, that'll be my belt. It'll carry some pouches on it. It'll carry my, uh, my knife on it, my silky saw on it. And that's why I got that. That was going to be my next project. I also make a bunch of the smaller belts. Okay. Again, antique brass. But I, I didn't rivet any, any of this stuff. This is, this is all stitched. I just, uh, I wanted everything to be stitched. That way it can be repaired, it can be replaced. And to me, I think this is a lot stronger than a couple of pop rivets. All right. Uh, they're not too long. Here, let me just close it up here. There's, there's the circumference. But that's to go around a bed roll or a backpack. If you've got straps on your backpack that are given out, you can uh, sew these in place or put these in place. That's what I made them for. I got uh, 20, 25 of these. So I just put a few on the table just for examples of the work. And I also have different legs because I never know what, what you guys are going to want. Eh? So I got some short ones and then I got a a few nice long ones. Whatever length you want. These are all dark brown. And then these two are a little uh, medium brown. So then I got into belts. But boy, I had to do a lot of research on that. To find out how to, how to make them. But am I ever glad that uh, I learned how to make belts. 
So that was my next project. And just to show you also, I have three more belts in here. Okay, it's all two inch. These are extra long because again, I don't know how long a client would want them. So I just uh, made myself three two inch belts just in case someone wanted a bushcraft belt. Now this was my next project. A very good friend of mine introduced me to cookeries. Three eighths, 10 inch blade. That, my friend, is a knife. I do like the traditional wooden sheaths that it comes with that's covered in uh, pig skin or it's covered in buffalo hide, very thin. But I wanted to make something different. So, this was my interpretation of a sheath for a kukri. And <laughs> the first time playing around with stuff like that Again, this is all 9 ounce leather. This here, all the fasteners, everything, the dangler, all this is what you consider gunmetal. So I designed it with a lot of uh, options for different ways to carry. You just flip her back. Grab your knife and then just slide her in. Okay. And close her up. All right. As far as I was questioned about uh, <laughs> uh, about my snake, okay, that's the the yellow uh, anaconda. And when I said, I don't know, it's just something that popped into my head, has no direct meaning to my life, <laughs> just the way I think, which is scary enough sometimes. But yeah, I figured, you know what, I'm going to put an anaconda. It, there's, it's, it's like a, you know, an empty place, right? And a, an artist or whatever just has to fill it with something. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I did. Okay. And again, that's all my sit stitching. I sew almost everything. Now, my dangler here, I made it so you can remove it. So these here are Chicago screws. Again, gun metal. Try to make everything as best I can in one piece. Now the welt is where I started to get into the wider welts. Because of the thickness of the knife, as you can see, the knife is three eighths of an inch thick, so I had to really, really think hard on how I was going to do that. And then for the fasteners, I put it in the middle of the welts, as you can see. <laughs> I like that. I was questioned on that quite a bit. And I just said, you know what? I like it. Different. So how many ways can you carry that blade? Well, you got your leg drop. You can uh, utilize this part right here if you want to do a leather wrap around your thigh. Or you could put a leather wrap uh, right here around your uh, thigh. But what I did, here let me just move the knife a bit. I figured, you know what, I'm going to make a bulger carry. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up making a Baldrick carry for it. Again, 
Everything is uh, gunmetal. Very, very strong. Good cost to it also, but you know what? It's going to last a long, long time. And again, it's all stitched. Now where I wanted it, this is the shoulder part, the dangler part, the shoulder part. So I stitched that also because it's two pieces here. But on the opposite side, I got 12 gauge uh, primers just for just for decoration. That's all that is. The stitching holds everything together. The 12 gauge uh, primers, decoration only. And as you can see, I figured since I got a a snake there I put another one there on uh, my shoulder strap why I got bored but I like it when you're carrying it it's a matching piece again there's the other side now you can do it two ways multiple ways you can hook it up here Put it over your shoulder and let it dangle or you can hook it up here and then hook it up here all right there's all kinds of ways or if you want to carry it upside down you can hook it up here and you can hook it up back here at the tip so it's got uh, quite a few different carries i enjoyed uh, I enjoyed putting that together and like I said uh, as far as the snake goes no direct meaning except for what I think about sometimes when I'm uh, working crazy so I made that for my kukri